still not understood properly by women or by men. The average man in this country and in my country and in the whole Western world is struggling with his true manhood. He doesn't know what it is to be a man. About 40 years ago, it was very easy to be a man. 60 years ago, it was automatic to be a man because the roles were very clear. He goes to work, you keep the house. You have the babies, he buy the food. And that's why your grandmother didn't have a divorce. There was no divorces back then because the roles were very clear. Everyone knew where their place was. The man place was out working, the woman was home keeping home. And then the man bought the home, the woman cleaned it and kept it. The man bought the food, the woman cooked it and served it. It was very simple. Matter of fact, most women and men at that time didn't have a problem with one another because there was no competition and no contention. It was so tough to survive 60 years ago that everybody had to keep their roles clear. It was simple to be married and to love one another. Matter of fact, uh, your, your grandmother and grandfather did not really express love the way you express love today because they didn't have no, they didn't have no time to do it. He was, busy, he was busy working 10, 12 hours a day. By the time he came, all he wanted was food, sex, and bed. And you know, the woman back then didn't complain. Why? She understood. He worked all day. He was tired. She had his food ready. She fed him, had sex, went to bed. He's happy. Next morning, he goes back out in the forest on the jungle of life and work for her and take care of the kids. And so she actually respected him because he did that. He worked hard. And she... She was respected by him because he knew she took care of the kids and the home and, the, and everything. So they respected one another. There was a high respect for each other. Their love was based on their roles. They, she loved him because he worked so hard to keep the family together. There was this re mutual respect. And then something happened. World War II came. World War II changed the world in ways we have not calculated yet. Hundreds of thousands of men in America went to Europe to fight. The men used to work in the factories, but now when the men are gone, the women were asked to make bullets and to, instead of, you know, sewing, they had to learn to make tanks. And if you study the history of America, that's when women began to leave the home to go out and work for the war machinery. So the men are in the, in the battlefield, they left home, the women now have to go and make the bullets for the men to use in the guns. After the war was finished, 1945, the men come back home and there's no one home. Where is she? She's in the factory. Guess whose job that used to be? His job. So now he comes back with two problems. One, the home's empty and she has his job. Problem, she's now earning revenue. So now we got three problems because he used to provide everything. That's why she respected him. Now she's making more than he's making. So the, the respect has dropped. Thirdly, they used to need each other. That's why her grandmother and grandfather never got a divorce. They needed each other. Matter of fact, if she didn't mention leaving, his, his, his question would have been, where are you going? She had no money, she had no support, so that's why she stayed. That's why many times, you know, uh, 60 years ago, a woman may be abused by a man but never leave. She had nowhere to go, there was no other support. So she stayed, she made the marriage work, he made the marriage work. But now we got a new equation, we got women out working now, we got men displaced and they're not sure what to do. And you know, back then, a man's manhood was measured by simple things like he builds the house for her, he earns the food, he brings home the bacon, yeah? he pays the utilities, he takes care of the kids as far as their, their maintenance, and he protects the family. And it was clear, that's what a man does. She was very clear. What she did was she kept the house clean, she kept the kids in order, she cooked the food, and she took the money and distributed it properly. But now here comes a new equation. He comes home, and today is still being felt he doesn't know what it is to be a man anymore. I mean, women, and it's not your fault. Please don't think it's your fault. It's what happened to our social structure. So now we have men today, since World War II, don't know how to be a man. Now, your grandfather told you, oh, you want to be a man? You put your foot down in your house. Your answer is not my house. So he's frustrated. So what does he do? The only thing that he has left is his strength. So the result is domestic abuse. And that's why domestic violence is so high, because we got a male in crisis who is frustrated at misunderstanding what manhood means because he you see in the past womanhood and manhood was measured by the roles that they played but now the roles are gone 40 years ago the man bought him the bacon today the woman owns the pig am i right
What do you do when, you're, when the woman makes more money than you? Men fall apart. They don't know what to do with that. They don't know, well, what, how am I supposed to feel like a man if you make more money than me? See, and he feels this, this crisis inside. Now, let me tell you what's happening to the male. Here's a verse you never saw before, guaranteed. It's found in Psalm 62. It talks about exactly what's happening to the male right now in your country. Psalm 62 talks about how we are treated as males. Here's what it says in verse 3. How long will you assault a man? Hmm. Would all of you throw him down? This leaning wall? This tottering fence? That's what they're doing to us. We are already leaning. And they're pushing us. You could never do anything right, they say. You're just like your pa, they say. You could never succeed in anything. You are a loser. You can't even keep your children. You can't take care of your wife. You can't keep a job. They keep pushing. Look at that. How long will you assault a man? Society is assaulting us. David says, they fully intend to topple him from his lofty place. Talking about man now. They take delight in lies. They lie on us. They lie with their mouths and they bless. But in their hearts they curse us. He's talking about what they do to men. Listen to this. He says, but find rest, O my soul. David says, even though they try to destroy me as a male, uh, I find my rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from Him. Are you listening to me? He alone is my rock and my salvation, and He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. So here's what I call the male's mind today. Most of you can relate to this list. Men don't feel the power of self-confidence anymore. They don't feel the power of social roles anymore. Men don't feel the power of their masculinity anymore. That's why many of them are not sure whether they are men. Many men don't feel like they're wanted by women anymore. How many women have you met who said to you, I don't need your car, I don't need your money, I don't need your house, I don't need nothing from you, I got everything myself. And some of you married women that are making you feel like dirt because when you met her, she had babies and house already. And then she puts pressure on you by saying, why don't you be a man? Well, you don't know what to be a man. You don't know what that means anymore. Because when your father was a man, it was easy. So do I buy a house? She got a house. Do I buy a car? She got two. Do I give her children? She came with three of them already. Do I buy a grocery? She owns the refrigerator. Do I give her money? She bought on the pig, not just the bacon. She making more than me. So now the guy is stuck. So what am I supposed to do to be a man now in this house? Your problem is you don't feel wanted anymore. How many times have a woman threatened you? If you don't do what I say, you can get out. This is my house. You remember the days when your father was a man? He used to say, this is my house. And I, I wear the pants in this house. She wear pants too now. So what do you mean you wear the pants? It's tough to be a man. Men don't feel needed anymore. Of course she doesn't need you. Her salary is higher than yours. She owns the condominium. The car you're driving is her car. The TV you're watching is her TV. And the food in the refrigerator is her food and the fridge. I she tell you to be a man. That's why a lot of men don't know what to do. They don't feel appreciated. They don't feel respected. And they don't feel secure. That's why many men act like women. They are feminized because they are threatened by the woman. Because you see, the problem is the woman don't know what she's doing to you. She needs help too. Because she's destroying your masculinity. Another concern that I've concluded is this one statement. Dad is destiny. They were doing a main article in Newsweek magazine during the period of Father, Father's Day and they did a research on fathers. Based on all of their research, they concluded that dad is destiny. And what they meant was, so go the men, so go the nation. They found out that 92% of all problems in society is related to the absence of a male in the family. Whether it's boys with guns or girls with babies. Dropouts of school, prisons filled with young men, all related, they say, to the absence 
of a father in the house. The secular world therefore agrees with God, finally. If you read what God's conclusion of humanity's problem is, it may shock you. But in the last chapter of Malachi, the last three verses, God concludes what man needs. And here's what he says in Malachi. He will come and he will return the hearts of the children back, not to the mothers, but to the fathers, and the fathers back to the children. Otherwise, he says, I will curse the land. Which means whenever a society is crumbling and seem like it's under a curse, God says it's because the fathers are absent. After you read that statement in Malachi, you'll find a blank page in your Bible. You check, there's a blank page. That blank page is 400 years of silence. God said nothing for 400 years. And then suddenly a man appears in the wilderness, Matthew 2, and it's John the Baptist. And John the Baptist introduces this great Messiah who came to return the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the children back to the fathers. Here's what's interesting and mysterious to me. Jesus, when he came to solve man's problem, never chose a woman as a disciple. Why? He came to fix humanity and he had to follow a blueprint. And the blueprint didn't call for women. He had to deal with the original blueprint to fix humanity. So he knew he had to deal with what the blueprint called for. And it called for the males to be fixed first. The Bible says he chose 12, but the women followed. It's a very important scenario here. Men, you got to go get men. For women, they just show up. They're ready to shout. Women just show up. Let's have church, they say. But men, they play in sports. They out in the clubs. They drink in liquor. They smoke in dope. They in jail. You got to go get them. That's why churches are filled with women. He was dealing with healing humanity. Here's the other problem. I call it the male crisis. The men have lost their sense of purpose. That's why they bounce from job to job to job. They don't know what their career is. They don't know what their vocation is anymore. They kind of move around, just kind of bounce around. They have no sense of purpose. Number two, they lost their identity. That's why they pretend to be other people. Sometimes men pretend to be women. They have no identity. Thirdly, men lost their definition of manhood. They don't know what it is. They also lost their value to life. They lost their meaning in their lives. They have no reason to live. Most men lost their role. They don't know what it is to be a man in society or in the home. They lost their sense of significance. They feel that they are not important to the world anymore. And the average man, that's why he drinks and is in gangs and he kills and he shoots and he domestically violates his family because he is a man who has no sense of value. He has no vision. He lost his sense of importance. He also lost his sense of authority. How many men are afraid to lift their voice in their own house? The children that live in your house ain't yours. So what do you do with them when they curse you back? They tell you, you're not my daddy. I mean, this is, this is frightening to some men. That's why a lot of you men, I know you're quiet in here. We're going to deal with this stuff. You go home to her children. And you've been married for five years and the kids call you by your first name. No authority. And you can't correct them when they curse and do foolishness. You can't even correct them. There's no authority in the house. So you feel like a slave, like a dog. That's what men are dealing with today. And they are in this room. Men lost their sense of respect. No one respects the male anymore. So he doesn't respect himself either. And then men also lost what I call their own manhood. They lost their manhood. This is why they try to define manhood in very difficult ways. Now let me tell you the result of all of this crisis. The result is this, very important list. First of all, the challenge is, the, is that the male is struggling with his purpose. He doesn't know why a male was created. He also is struggling with his manhood. He doesn't know what it is to be a man. And he also doesn't know what it is to have authority. He's trying to regain authority by force or by abuse. Men are also struggling with their self-image. They're not sure how to be a man, so they, they imitate other men who are not worthy of imitation. They're trying to find their image. And then men are also trying to live with a woman in the 21st century. It's almost impossible to live with a woman in the 21st century because she doesn't need nothing from you. You buy a woman a gift, she said, that's cheap. I mean, break your heart. You can't buy a car, she got two of them. You can't buy a clothing, she got a closet full when you met her. So men are struggling with how to live with a woman who has everything. Challenging. And when you meet a woman who has her own house, own car, refrigerator, food, clothes, and everything else, and you move into the house after you get married, it ain't your house. 
So there's that fear that stays with you all during them years. You're afraid to conflict with her. You're afraid to challenge her because she might put you out. Because if we're going to fix the men, we got to first understand their problem. Now, what's the result of all of this confusion for the male? First of all, the male lost his self-image. Secondly, he lost his self-concept. The picture of what a man's supposed to be like. He also lost his self-confidence. That's why most men are very timid, very shy, and very angry. All mixed up in one. They also lost their self-worth. They don't feel valuable anymore. You know what made my father feel valuable? When my mother told him, thank you for bringing home food. Thank you for having a roof over our heads. Thank you for providing for the kids. That made him feel valuable. But you don't hear that no more today. Because the kids and the roof are hers. So you're struggling just to feel important to your wife. We also lost our sense of self-esteem. What makes us feel significant? We begin to hate ourselves. We lost our self-love. And therefore we lost our conviction. Most men I meet have no conviction in life. They just want to kind of pay a bill and die. There's no sense of assignment, no sense of, of purpose, no sense of, of, of living for a reason. No conviction. That's why they sleep around. No conviction. Her baby's all over the city. No conviction. This resulted in a condition that we're dealing with. I call it the male condition. The average man is confused. Why? He's confused with everything. He don't know who he is, why he is, where he is, what he is, and why he's going, where he's going. He don't, he don't understand the women, don't understand what women want, don't understand what society wants from him. So he's confused. And therefore he's also angry. You won't admit that, but I know that's true. And your anger is deeply concealed. I guarantee you that all the men in prison are angry men. All. Listen, I've done interviews with these men. Everyone was angry. And 90% of them was angry at their father who they never met. Or who they never saw. Or who was never there. Or who they couldn't talk to. They were angry. And their anger comes out in frustration. And the frustration comes out in self-hatred. And the self-hatred is manifested in depression. And most men are depressed and they quietly carry their anger. We have to get rid of that anger. Domestic violence comes from resentment. That results in social abandonment. That's when men give up on society. There's no hope. No use me going to school. No use me going trying to get a good job. No use to me trying to advance myself. They just abandon themselves to society and say, I'm not getting involved in the rat race, they say. They give up. And so we get gangs all over the city. We got all kinds of social clubs. We got all kinds of fraternities. All these different things we try to, because we've given up. And the last thing is that men manifest this hatred in domestic abdication. Abdication means he decides to leave the home. Can't take it anymore, I'm out of here. That's why divorce rates are so high. Infidelity is so high. Abandoning kids is so high. Spreading your sperm around the city is so high. Why? You just abandon society. Domestic abandonment. I ain't, lady, I'm out of here. I'm out of here, woman. I'm gone. Because the man is suffering that whole list. Let me tell you something. Even getting saved doesn't solve this problem. I know of preachers who beat their wives. Follow the Holy Ghost. I know preachers who curse at their children. Mad. Curse at their wives. Slap them. And then preach the next morning. Because they never dealt with the, the real issue. Manhood. In order for the male to get help, he has to respond correctly. Here's what I am recommending and I'm happy to see you because I think you're responding correctly. One, for the male to have solutions to his problems, he must first recognize he needs help. And that's tough for a male to admit. Secondly, he must accept the need for help. And thirdly, he must admit that he doesn't know some things. We think we know everything. You know what can tell me nothing? I ain't going to no seminar. I'm a man. I ain't going to no conference. I know what the man is. You don't know what the man is. You can't even sleep with your own wife. You got to admit you don't know some things. I read four books a month. That's a tough thing to do. The reason why I read so much is because I don't want to be stupid. I got a family, a wife and kids that I have to lead. I have companies that I have to lead. I have one of the largest churches in my country to lead. I got a government. I got 17 countries that look to me for advice. Presidents and prime ministers look to me for advice. I got to keep reading. When was the last time you read a book and finished it? You know why you don't read? You think you know everything already. That's your problem. You got to admit that you don't know. And number four, you must seek the help of successful men. We go to the wrong men to get help. Here's a guy who's been divorced five times and you go to him for advice. That's stupid, man. 
I'm talking with your brother. Yeah, I mean your blood brother. He can't even stay married. Don't listen to him. He's talking to men who never had a business and want a business advice from them. Seek successful men and then submit to them. And number five, commit yourself to pursue knowledge. Men, I challenge you to decide from this night forward that you're going to turn your home into a library. You have to do this, brother. No one can learn for you. No one. Commit that you're going to change after this night. You're going to become a pursuer of knowledge as a man. That goes to you pastors too.